Hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for Hassan Beekman's first ever virtual benefit. My name is Sarah Miller, and I am the founder of Hassan Beekman. What a wild month it's been. I want to start by acknowledging the devastating, massive impact that the coronavirus has had on our world. As you can imagine, the families we serve are facing enormous challenges because of this situation. And we as an organization have been taking each obstacle head on. We know that many of you want to hear more about how we've specifically responded at AHOB in the last few weeks. And later tonight, Sloan Hedrick, our Senior Director of Programming, will give us an update on that. We know that they, we are going to be dealing with the fallout from these circumstances for a long time. But while our methods may need to adjust, our mission does not change. And so tonight, as much as possible, we want to give you a break from hearing about COVID-19 and share what God has been doing at AHOB and our plans for continuing to serve our neighbors no matter what the days ahead bring. Secondly, we did not expect to be connecting with you through a digital benefit, which is something new for us. So we appreciate your patience with this new format and we hope it will be as seamless as possible. At the same time, it was really important to us that we moved forward with this night in whatever form we were able. Tonight is deeply personal for me. As many of you know, I founded and have been leading a house on Beekman for the last eight years. My family is moving to Texas and making space for the next chapter at a house on Beekman. So in many ways, this is my chance to thank you and to give you a glimpse at the bright future we believe is in store for everyone at AHOP. We didn't think that this moment could wait. We anticipate that this event will last about 30 minutes. And since we know you don't have anywhere to be, stick with us. We're going to interview some of our AHOB family, as well as show you a video we made just for tonight. I promise you don't want to miss that. Finally, we'll hear from our new executive director, Derek Smith, about what's next for a house on Beekman. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier, even in the midst of all of this uncertainty, life still goes on for our neighbors in the Bronx. And so we are still here supporting them. Our commitment to our mission and the families we serve is unwavering, especially at a time like this. And we continue to dream big. The funds that we raise at this event will not only have a significant impact on how we support our families now, but what we'll be able to do in the fall and beyond. Tonight, we invite you into those plans. At the end of our time together, we'll talk more specifically about our financial needs and how you can join us, but we welcome you to give at any point in the night if you feel led. We have an incredibly generous donor who will match any gift given in connection with this event up to a total of $300,000. So please help us make the most of this opportunity. For more information on how to give, please follow the instructions on your screen. While I think most of you are familiar with the House on Beekman, some of you may be new. So let me share briefly the basics of who we are and what we do. I moved to the South Bronx 12 years ago, not with an intention to start a nonprofit, but rather with the simple goal to literally live more closely to some of our nation's deepest injustices, letting those realities convict and change me, and in doing so, become more like the God I read about in scripture. After three years of simply being a neighbor in the neighborhood, listening to the community, and realizing the enormous privilege I held, I started a house on Beekman alongside some beautiful people that you will hear more from later tonight. We started with a dream that every child in the South Bronx would grow up and live out the fullness for which God created them. I know these kids. They have the potential to be the leaders that tear down the injustices that stifle our neighborhood and bring the very necessary change we need in our world. 
but they need the tools and the opportunities to get them there. And so we developed a model that would support children from birth to career to empower them to live out their full potential. We know that crucial development starts at birth. So in 2011, we created a program called Babies to Three that equips caregivers to give children from birth to three the best start at life possible. We started with four pregnant women, and this program has grown to serve more than 100 people on an annual basis. Nine years later, Babies to Three is still bursting at the seams, and we plan to add more space and staff to see it expand in the next year. When that first cohort of babies turned three, there was literally not one preschool in our neighborhood. And so we started a preschool that now partners with the Department of Education's 3K and Pre-K for All initiatives and is such a high quality program, it's attracted leading educational institutions, public education systems, and other nonprofits to learn from our model. We currently have 41 students in our preschool and with a waiting list of literally hundreds for two years in a row, we plan to double our capacity for our three-year-olds in the fall. We continue to support our graduating preschoolers in elementary and then middle school through after-school programming and a summer camp that supports them academically, socially and emotionally, spiritually, and through extracurricular activities. And this year, we have our first ever cohort of students in high school and are piloting a high school program that we plan to fully launch in the fall. In our after school and summer programs, we serve 134 students, serving over 250 participants in all of our programs combined. In the last nine years, we have been on quite a journey, which is our theme for the night, journey. And you all at some point have joined us along the way and we couldn't be more grateful. There's a handful of people who've been on this journey from the very beginning and who aren't going anywhere. And as we reflect on where we've been and where we're going, we wanted to give them the opportunity to share with you tonight about the incredible story that God is writing in the South Bronx. Hello, ladies. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. So I have here with me Geneva Velasquez, who is our first ever participant at A House on Beekman. She has three kids in our programs and is on our preschool staff. And Sloane Hedrick, who helped me found our first program eight years ago and is now the Senior Director of Programming at A House on Beekman. Geneva, I wanna start with you. So you changed my life forever one day when we were having a conversation brainstorming about A House on Beekman. And I asked you, what your dreams were for your children. And you said you wanted them to have a career that they were passionate about. Your answer was stunning to me because for my parents, your dream was just a baseline expectation for my life because of the opportunities that were available to me, a future career was just a given. So as someone who was born and raised in the neighborhood yourself, can you speak to the opportunities that were available to you versus some of the opportunities your kids have access to, how that's changed, and what role AHAB has played in that? Yes. Well, my parents didn't have the support and access back then raising children the way we as parents have today. Even when I was a young mom with my first two children, there was very little support in my neighborhood. Um, I had to learn on my own how to become a good parent. And I feel that a house on Beekman is changing the future of the children through the parenting classes, through the high quality schools, um, forming relationships with others where they can learn and grow, you know, to become the better version of themselves. The programs are keeping the children engaged. Um, they're keeping them out of trouble. They're keeping them focused on their futures and their goals. Um, making them believe that they can change their path. Um, when I was younger, a child's form of fun was running in the abandoned buildings, jumping from the roof to roof, you know, playing in the elevator shafts, unfortunately dodging bullets, and, you know, getting into trouble. 
now they have a program that believes in them and keeps them safe and is willing to guide them through life every step of the way. I love hearing you say that because you've actually been a really important part of creating those solutions. You started as a participant and a parent, and now you're a vital staff member of our preschool team. We've been really intentional at a house on Beekman about this not being Sarah's thing, but that it is owned and led by the community. Can you tell us about your personal journey with AHOB and how that's shifted over the years? Well, I started out as a mom in the program, and now I have a career helping my community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, truthfully, I feel God is working through me to help and to support the children of my community. My family would always tell me that I should move out of the neighborhood, you know, because they had all moved out mm -hmm. due to the past violence, due to their negative, you know, experiences here. They refused to raise their children here. Mm -hmm. My family felt by moving out was the only way to succeed in life. And a house on Beekman actually has proven them otherwise. Mm. That you do not have to move to become someone because with enough support and with enough guidance, you can overcome all the obstacles. We can change this neighborhood to become the future store owners, the future doctors, et cetera. And that's what I want for my kids too. My dreams for my kids are to have a career that they're passionate about and within the community to change the next tomorrow. Wow, that is so powerful. And knowing your kids, I believe that they can and will do that. Are they there actually? I'd love for them to come say hi. Yes. Jaleesh. Hi, Jalise. Um, well, this is Jalise. I was actually pregnant of her when I started a House on Beekman. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming over to say hi, Jalise. We are talking with some friends of a House on Beekman. Would you tell them what your favorite part of AHOB is? My favorite part of AHOB is being able to interact with my friends and helping them do their work and being able to do passion projects on Friday. Awesome. That's so great. That sounds like fun. Thanks so much. Uh, is, and then is Jaden there? Yes, Jaden is here too. Hi. Hi, Jaden. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. So Jaden, you're in high school, right? Mm -hmm. And you're one of the students that's piloting our high school program? Yep. Can you just give us a sneak peek of what that program looks like? Um, the program is really just like working with children and mainly having fun while doing so and learning to have a great career ahead of you and to give you a lot of advice. Cool. And I know that you guys have been on some trips this year, right? Mm -hmm. What's been your favorite trip that you guys have gone on? The Google, the Google headquarters. The Google headquarters, it was pretty fun. What did you guys do there? When we went to the Google headquarters, we learned about the different careers and stuff we can specialize in when in the Google headquarters and how much fun they have while doing their job. Hmm. Nice. So, as you know, you're one of the few students who's been piloting this program, but we want to open it up to a dozen more high school students. And so, we're asking our friends who are watching tonight to help us do that. Can you tell them why you think this program is important, particularly for kids from our community? I think this program is important because it gives kids, like, a, a guideline mm. to what, like, they can what they can achieve and what they can do instead of what they want to dream. Instead of dreaming, you can just do it and mm -hmm. how you can stay out of trouble and you can have like a lot of fun while doing so. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks for talking with us today, Jaden. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. So one last question for you, Geneva. While we're talking about some of the needs, you work in our preschool program. What do you see as some of the biggest needs there? Well, our preschool is by far the highest quality preschool in our community. 
our families truly receive the best of the best. There is a huge demand for us to take on more students, but we are at capacity in our building. I'd say our biggest um, need is the funding for the space and staff to be able to add more students, which hopefully we're trying to do in September. I agree with that. Thank you. So Sloan, I have some questions for you now. We have been on quite a journey together these past 10 years, and you've seen us through many changes at a house on Beekman. Can you speak to why you think we're poised for the transition that we're in right now? Sure. I mean, it is hard to believe all that's happened at a house on Beekman since I met you, Sarah. From the beginning, and especially now, a house on Beekman has never been just Sarah and Sarah's story but it's been a collective group of neighbors and friends and families and staff members and leaders who make up a community and we all are aiming for restoration in this beautiful neighborhood that has seen great injustice um, i definitely have the utmost confidence in derek our new executive director and i think his specific qualities that brought him to this place will serve us well in our next chapter but at the same time, Ahab has never been and still isn't about just one person. It will remain a whole community with all kinds of different gifts that we all bring to the table that will prepare us in moving forward. I agree. One thing we haven't talked about yet tonight is our move towards an advocacy model, which I know that you alongside Derek have been creating. Can you tell us a little bit about your experience with that and why you think it's important and what the needs are regarding that initiative in the future? Definitely. So Derek and I have talked about moving toward an advocacy model for over a year now. And while we love the on-site programming that we're able to provide to our kids during after school hours, we, we see a need and an opportunity to connect with even more of our students in a more holistic way. So through partnerships with our student schools, our leaders will be able to visit classrooms, meet their kids for lunch, um, maybe volunteer with the on-site after-school programs and just stay in close contact with our students and families and their teachers. Um, and our advocates will support our students' growth in all areas, not just academically, but helping them identify passions and strengths as well. You, you just met Jaden. Um, his advocate actually recently went with Geneva and him to a meeting at his school. He was having trouble with a specific teacher. And while Geneva had tried to find solutions, things just weren't really getting better. So um, by bringing his advocate along, additional levels of accountability and support developed and things have been much better since. So we're just, we're excited to see how God will use this new model um, as our advocates create lifelong relationships with our students and families. And we'll need about double um, the current number of leaders we have in order to support our, all of our students, which means definitely additional funding for their salaries. But I can't think of a better way for us to steward our dollars than to invest directly into relationship building. Yeah, we have seen a tremendous impact in the rollout of that so far, and I can't wait to see that on a larger scale. Last, I know that many people are wondering about AHOB's response to the coronavirus. Can you speak a little bit to what that looks like? Sure. We are as committed as ever to accomplishing our mission and supporting our families. Um, and I've just been blown away by the innovation and creativity our staff have shown during this time through phone calls, a YouTube channel, videos from our teachers and um, our own virtual classroom platform, we've been able to see just how much a teacher's face on a regular basis can be so regulating for um, so many of our kids. Um, this time obviously comes with different challenges for each family. Um, and we've definitely never been a one size fits all organization. So we've seen our staff troubleshooting each of our family's different situations, whether it's needing access to Wi-Fi or um, specialized learning plans for students with specific needs, or even just giving enough devices to support many children trying to homeschool in their little apartment. Great. Well, thank you both so much. It has been an honor to get to work with you ladies. Thank you for investing so much of yourselves into this organization and for committing to do so for years and years to come. 
Now, stay tuned because we have a special video that we made just for tonight about the journey of a house on Beekman. That's coming up next. When we started this, we didn't know what it would grow into. We didn't have a plan, a strategy, an organization, only a belief that God was doing a dramatic work of renewal in the South Bronx, and he was inviting us to be a part of it. It was weird because you don't really see like white people in like our neighborhood. I was like, okay, I guess, right? You know, okay, let's see what she has, like, you know, yeah. So I didn't really know what to expect. When we set out on this journey, we only focused on being here, getting to know our neighbors and understanding what God was doing in this community. But soon, it was giving kids a place to do their homework. It was hosting dinners with our neighbors. It was walking with moms through the struggles of parenting in a place filled with systemic obstacles. I just remember like smelly feet and like crowded rooms. A lot of people came out in like this small house. Sitting in one of the rooms upstairs on like a dingy couch, worshiping. And it was like, you can feel kind of God there in the room. It was crowded and we couldn't really move, but he was there. Soon we found others from the community who were already on this journey and joined with them to figure out how best to work together to see this community thrive. It was cool, it was, it was brand new for like all of us. So it was us all being around the table and actually starting something new. The heart of what we felt and knew was, was going to happen in that place helped us push through all the initial challenges. I remember like having to lug things around from like church to church because we had no real place to go. And we moved from place to place. Um, but a lot of us, a lot of the kids stood there. We knew that it was gonna be better. We knew this was something we could not give up on. As the journey has continued, we've seen others join us. Donors who've brought resources, volunteers who've brought their time, staff who've brought their talents, and Beekman families who've brought their lives. We started with Babies to Three. As those children were growing and we knew they needed a great place to enter preschool in the community, we developed our 3K and Pre-K program. And then alongside the elementary schools, we've worked hard to create an after-school program for the children to have a safe place to go and pursue their passions and dreams together. Um, that program has, of course, led into creating a middle school and high school after-school program so that we truly are able to follow our kids along this seamless series of programs. In just the last three years, we've made incredible progress. You, our partners, have stepped up to give generously and our budget more than doubled in these three years. So I think in the beginning it was just like Sarah and a couple of her friends, like, now it's like got three different locations. People that live in the neighborhood is actually leading the program. I feel that the needs from the community can only be told by the community. And I feel that it's very important to have participants become the leaders of a house on Beekman. It brings a lot to the organization because we know the needs personally. You see a familiar face, like somebody that comes from where you come from, that like been through a couple of things you've been through. So you're like, all right, I can do it because they came from where I came from. So. We see ourselves coming alongside this community um, in ways that, that we want to know what's already working, what's not working. How can we support you and partner with you as your friends and neighbors? The vision for this movement has always been too large for one family, one block, or one generation. We desire to see broad, systemic, and deep-rooted change take place in the South Bronx. My time leading this journey is coming to a close, but we're excited for the next generation of leadership at a house on Beekman, who are ready to follow God as he leads us into what he has yet to do. As our journey continues, 
we will remain unwavering in our mission to come alongside our neighbors to provide a seamless series of programs from birth to career that will empower the next generation of the South Bronx to live out their full potential. We will do this by launching a high school initiative to continue in our seamless series of programs, adopting an advocacy model to fight for and uphold the dreams of our families, and by doubling our preschool capacity at a new early childhood education site. And in order to see this through, we need each of you. We need your resources to provide daily programming, your influence to create opportunities for our neighbors, and your talents to mentor and inspire our students to live out their full potential. Whether you've been with us over the past nine years or you're just now joining us on this journey, we can't thank you enough for your partnership. As we embark on this next chapter, we need your continued and passionate support. We can't wait to take these next steps with you on this journey. We're nearing the end of our program, but there's one more piece to our time together tonight. Around this time last year, my husband and I made the hardest decision that we've ever had to make. And as difficult as it was, we knew that our time in the South Bronx, and for me as the leader of a house on Beekman, was coming to an end. But in the midst of the grief that came with that, we were also filled with a hope and a peace that can only come from God. A hope that God was doing something new at a house on Beekman, and that the organization was ready for a life beyond its founder. And so while it was hard for me and for those who see a house on Beekman so intertwined with me to admit, the truth is this was never about me, but always about the beautiful people of the South Bronx and our great God who already had a plan to start a movement that would create a path for them to flourish. I believe leaving now is not only the healthy choice, but also the right and necessary one for Ahab to grow and become what our families and community needs it to be in the years ahead. But before we talk about what's next, I wanna pause and thank you. Man, I wish we were there in person and I could be looking at your faces when I say thank you. For those of you who believed in a 22-year-old girl with radical dreams and decided to trust me with your dollars, thank you. For those who've joined along the way and who've invested in our model, our programs, and most importantly, our people, thank you. For those of you who've just joined us this year, or even tonight, welcome and thank you. For those of you who sat down with me in September, as I told you I was leaving and committed to increased giving during and beyond this transition, thank you. Those meetings were more encouraging to me than you will ever know. Founding and leading this organization has been the honor of my life because of the incredible people of the South Bronx who've been my family. Please continue to invest in them. And because of you, our donors and supporters who have time and time again, generously and sacrificially been the backbone of this organization. I'm humbled that you've trusted me and I know it's really that you've trusted God and I'm asking for your trust and your commitment one last time as we step into a new future at a house on Beekman. Starting last fall, our board conducted a search to find our new executive director. It was clear that the job of executive director in its current form, and certainly with our plans for growth in the next five years, was bigger than one person's capacity or expertise. 
And so now we have an executive team with three exceptional leaders. Sloan Hedrick, who you've already met tonight, has moved into a broader role as Senior Director of Programming and will work to ensure a house on Beekman's expanding programs remain excellent in quality while rooted in the values of a house on Beekman that have made our work so special. Our board also recognized that in order for AHOP to flourish, we must more deeply engage with donors, prospective donors, and other stakeholders. To that end, we've brought on a new team member, Rasan Graham, as senior, senior director of external engagement, who will advise and build capacity in our organization to be poised for our future growth. Last, Derek Smith will be leading a house on Beekman forward as executive director. I've worked with Derek closely for the last three years as he has built and led our middle school program. I know him as a passionate, capable leader who is deeply committed to carrying forward the mission of a house on Beekman. It is with joy and confidence that I pass the reins to him, both to finish out our time together tonight and to lead a house on Beekman in the next phase of the journey. Thank you. Good evening. First, I want to say thank you, Sarah, for your hard work and your dedication over these past eight years, and more specifically for mentoring me over these past three. I also want to say thank you tonight to our board for your vote of confidence and your trust in me to lead our organization into its next chapter. Now, I want to start this evening with the story of a starfish. Now, for those who've heard it, I ask that you bear with me because I need to recap it for those who haven't. Now, the story starts out with a young woman running back and forth from shore to sea tossing stranded starfish back into the sea. And then a man comes along and notices, and so he asks her, why are you doing this? Because what he realizes is that there are miles and miles of beach and hundreds and hundreds of starfish. And so then he goes on to say, you can't save them all. You can't possibly make a difference. But the young woman responded by bending down and picking up another starfish and throwing it into the sea. And then she said, I made a difference in that one. Now, I would like to think that the story didn't end with the man just watching the woman toss the starfish back into the sea, but that he decided to join her. And as others saw them, they got inspired and joined as well. So what is the point? The reason I love this story is because it is the story of a house on Beekman. Eight years ago, a young woman took on a difficult task of starting an organization that focused on empowering the families of the South Bronx. And just like the woman in the story, undeterred, Sarah has pushed to make a difference in the lives of our neighbors, but she didn't do the work alone. Others have come alongside her to make the impossible possible, and I'm glad to say that I am one of them. So as we enter into this next chapter of A House on Beekman, you can be rest assured that the foundation, the vision and mission upon which A House on Beekman sits will remain strong. And as we look towards the future, AHOB wants to increase its reach and have a more significant impact on our neighbors. And so I'm excited to briefly share with you today what we have upcoming. First, we plan to expand our early childhood program to serve some of those students that are on that long wait list that Sarah referred to. Not only do we want to serve more students, but we also wanna have a more significant impact on their lives earlier, giving them the best start of life possible. Second, we're launching our new high school program, Journey Beyond Dream. Now our original middle school cohort that I helped to lead is going on to high school and we wanna join them on their journey. So we've piloted a high school program this year and it shows some significant gains and so we wanna roll that out next year. Now our high school program will focus on navigating the New York City high school selection process, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, academic support, workforce readiness, and collegiate preparation. Finally, we wanna ensure that our students, like those starfish, not only make it back to sea, but thrive once they're there. And so to that end, we, are, we have developed a brand new strategy targeted at going deeper with our families. As Sloan had discussed earlier, our new advocacy initiative will help to ensure that our students are receiving everything that they need in order to live out their full potential. And finally, 
I want to share with you probably the most significant takeaway for me from the story of the starfish. When I first read the story, I thought, why did the starfish end up on the beach? From what I could gather, the only thing that separated them from those who went beyond the surf was chance. So in other words, our students are like those starfish. They didn't get to choose the reality in which they live. And if there's one thing that I know we can all agree upon tonight, because of our joint experience over these past few weeks, is that we don't always get to choose our circumstances. Whether we are born into them or there happens to be a pandemic that quickly changes our way of living, we don't get to decide if we end up on the beach or back to the sea. However, the beautiful thing about this story is that we do get to decide what happens to those who do end up on the beach. Since being at Ahab, I've learned that God doesn't call us to a life of comfort, but instead he wants us to seek the places that are uncomfortable, knowing and trusting that he will provide comfort so that we can provide comfort for those who are in trouble. See, the journey might have started with Sarah, but it now belongs to all of us. It belongs to the Genevas and to the Sloans and to each of you who are watching this broadcast. This is our journey. And so I'm asking you to partner with us tonight because we need your continued support, especially now in these times of uncertainty. Whether it's your resources, your talents or prayers, I'm asking you to join us. On your screen now is the information you need to make your pledge or donation. If you're giving via credit card, go to ahab.givesmart.com. And if you'd like to mail in a check, let us know your pledge by texting AHOB, A-H-O-B, to 76278. As a reminder, we have a $300,000 donation match opportunity tonight. Please help us hit that goal. And if there are other ways you're interested in getting involved with the House on Beekman, please email us at info at a house on Beekman.org. Once again, if you're giving via credit card, go to ahob.givesmart.com. And if you're giving by check, please text AHOB, A-H-O-B, to 76278 to let us know your pledge. This concludes the main part of our programming for the evening. Thank you for joining us. We do have a bonus portion of our evening that is starting right now. Join us at the Zoom link on your screen for a live Q&A with myself, Sloan, Sarah, and board member Sandy Taylor. Whether you want to say goodbye to Sarah, you want to speak further with our executive team, or you have questions about our programs or plans for the future, we would love to have a more intimate conversation with you. Thanks again and have a blessed night.